Hi all, uh, it is nice to be back at this meeting. I thank the organizers uh, for allowing me to present my work in front of this community. So I'll be talking about domain structure and extreme values in FDPO in the context of CD models. I'll explain all these terms. So this is a work done with Mustan Sir Varma at TFR Hyderabad, it is in archive. So what is the goal? The goal is to characterize the static and dynamic behavior of the so-called fluctuation dominated phase ordering. As the term says, it is the coexistence of fluctuation and order both at macroscopic scales. This is unusual because if you if there are very large fluctuations, you don't expect order, but there can be situations where both can coexist. So we'll give some examples where this has been seen. So uh, the question is, how does the steady state looks like in this kind of phase? And also the ordering kinetics, which says that how does such kind of phase evolves in time? And uh, to characterize this, we'll look at the interface and extreme values, and we'll explicitly mention in the context of a model what does all this mean. So uh, these are some examples where uh, this kind of phase has been observed. So this is uh, quite, uh, I mean, uh, diverse kind of uh, systems where you can have long range magnets. You can have uh, uh, freely cooling granular gas with in, uh, inelastic collisions. There are vibrated rods. There are active pneumatic systems. Or these kind of things are observed. So we'll be particularly concerned about a kind of model where uh, you, are, you have particles which is driven by a fluctuating surface. So uh, this kind of models has been studied for a long time. And these have shown FDPO behavior in many of the cases. So we'll be considering this kind of model. But before that, how does an FDPO look like? So uh, FDPO is fluctuation dominated order. So first of all, you have order in the system. So namely, uh, by order, uh, some picture emerges in our mind that, OK, so you have a large system, say spins, and a large chunk of these spins are all up, or majority up, or something like that. Uh, or there are traffic models or particle models where you have a large number of particles assembled at the same time. Large means macroscopically large. They occupy macroscopic fraction of the system. Uh, there are some order which is not really like that. So a more general definition is through this coupon correlation. So you expect that uh, when a system is ordered, say for example a spin system, so uh, you have a spin up here and uh, say 100 sites away, you have another spin, which may also be up. But then you double the system size, and you expect that the same level of correlation is observed twice further away. So this is the notion of order in the sense of correlation. It just says that if you calculate the two-point correlation, the two-point correlation is a function of R over L. You double the system size, the same level of correlation also extends twice. So this is a. Uh, uh, maybe more general definition of order, which we'll be using here. What happens when the order is fluctuation dominated? So here, uh, you see, this is uh, one configuration. All these are steady state configurations, steady state but different times. You can see at one time, you can see there are two large clusters. Then these clusters kind of merge. There is one large cluster. But then again, it breaks up into three, four smaller but still macroscopically large clusters they again reassemble. So this is the so-called make and break feature, where you have macroscopic order at all the times, but the order itself is highly fluctuating. This is what gives rise to that high fluctuation even in the order phase. But it has a fallout. So when the cluster is breaking up and remerging, it has a wake. And in this wake, it gives rise to this all these small, small, these are like domain walls, as you will see in the uh, one or two slides later. So these are some kind of interface. So uh, interface means, you know, there are uh, two phases, like upspin and downspin, separated by a domain wall, which is like an interface. But here it turns out that the interfaces are not such smooth. It is very broad interface. Physically, I mean, in uh, real space, it is uh, stretches quite a large volume. And the consequence is that uh, this correlation gets a nice structure. So this is an example where you see this is the coupon correlation at different system sizes. And as you scale the uh, correlation we, uh, R, the separation by system size, all this collapse nicely. That means you have macroscopic order 
but you see that when this r by l goes to zero you have a cuspy behavior so this is the so called violation of porod law porod law says that when you have two phases separated by a smooth interface this should be linear but here uh, instead of linear there is a exponent alpha as y this ratio tends to zero and alpha is less than 1 which signifies that you have a broad interface uh, the question is how do you really characterize this kind of phase now you just see that there can be several clusters and in the thermodynamic limit you can have infinite number of macroscopic clusters so in principle you have to have infinite number of order parameters so one question is can we reduce the number of order parameters or number of quantities to characterize this this question we address in the context of the coarse grain depth models the cd models so this is a model defined uh, through an interface so it is like a, uh, there is a flat interface you sprinkle particles now you allow the interface to roughen it develops a structure and the particles just follow into it and the particle clusters form now uh, for simplicity we just define a reference height and all the uh, uh, surface points below the reference height is assigned as spin minus 1 above it is assigned as spin plus 1 and these are two realizations of the up spin and down spin domains these are two different spin domains and you can see that there are many large domains separated by interfaces but you can also have large domains and there can be a very large interface also so this is the nature of FDPO. There is large interface, large domains together. And instead of uh, following each domain, I mean, instead of following the large number of domains, what we ask that, okay, let us follow one large cluster, the macroscopic one, and also somehow characterize the interface structure. How to do that? How to characterize the interface structure? Let us just count the number of domain walls and see if can give it some useful information. It turns out that the number of domain walls in the CD models uh, has this nice structure. The distribution of the number is uh, grows at square root L. So the first moment, the average number is square root L. The fluctuation is also square root L. And the higher cumulants are also grows at square root L. Now, why this number is important? So you imagine that uh, if the domain walls, you can, you have a system of size 100 and square root L means 10. So you can put the domain walls 10 sides apart, more or less. But then uh, averages will be of the order square root L, but the fluctuation will be small, so it is sharp. But whenever you have large fluctuation, that means the domain walls, they are spread in a non-uniform manner. And then there are other cumulants. So uh, if you have an information about the number of domain walls, that information also tells how the domain walls are actually distributed. Two plus two more. Okay. So, uh, so this information about the domain walls, number of domain walls also gives some insight into the domain wall structure. Then uh, we also say that this is the domain wall, or how does the order looks like? So we look at the largest cluster in the system and it turns out that uh, in this kind of system, the average cluster size is a bad quantity to characterize order. But you have to look at uh, the macroscopic clusters and the largest one of them uh, uh, is also macroscopic as you expect, but the fluctuation is also macroscopic. So it is not that only you have many, many clusters which gives you macroscopic fluctuation, but only the largest cluster that is fluctuating a lot. And that alone can uh, give rise to the fluctuation in the order parameter in a tense. So uh, we say that in the steady state at least, the macroscopic cluster and the number of clusters or number of domain walls can give you a characterization of the uh, FDPO, the fluctuation dominated phases. So uh, another point comes that, okay, uh, how does we distinguish FDPO in terms of these two quantities? So for this, we have generalized a model. We assign a fugacity to number of clusters. And we found that uh, there is a phase transition from a order to disordered phase. And FDPO appears at a critical point, And it turns out that this critical point is also a mixed order phase transition happens at that point. And this quantity L max by L and S by L, this shows a jump. So this quantity is actually acts an order parameter which also gives you the kind of phase transition you are facing. So more on that uh, later. So if I have time, I'll tell. But yeah, just to skim through how does this quantities behave 
uh, while coarsening, it turns out that in the coarsening, uh, it means that the order is emerging from a uniform initial condition. Yeah, just 30 seconds. Uniform initial condition, you have the order emerging in a different, in an increasing length scale. And the length scale is uh, typically some power law of time. However, in case of the CD models and maybe generically for FDPO, there are important correction terms which is observed through the correlation. And it turns out that uh, there are some uh, local steady state and subsystem level independent assumption that has been taken. And the consequence is uh, the number of domain walls, uh, the variance of it is constant in time. It is fluctuating but constant in time. And it turns out that the black maximum cluster size has a logarithmic term in a leading order. And it is observed in simulation. So this is the largest uh, domain size with time. So we, we try to attempt a simple power law scaling. It does not work. But you take into account the logarithm, and it works nicely. So this is how these quantities behave in time. So the temporal and steady state characterization can be done through these two quantities that we believe. And in fact, there are uh, several models in which extended spatial order has been studied and these two quantities taken together can kind of distinguish different phases. So a question is how far we can extend uh, this. Uh, so this is what and this is a summary in that part. Any question? So, are this uh, logarithmic correction, is it true for any type of phase transition or is it applicable only for the FDPO? Uh, we expect uh, this kind of uh, logarithmic correction for, it could be more general because it depends, this is the extremal statistics, it comes from extremal statistics, right? So, we have uh, some clusters that is evolving as you coarsen, right? There are many clusters. Now the approach is that we have uh, subsystem level, there is order in one patch, another patch, the patches are independent. So it is like in every patch there is one big cluster and they are distributed somewhere and you are calculating the largest of the large clusters. And usually this carries this logarithmic behavior. So we expect not only in FDPO but maybe in other portioning system also this may appear. So, uh, it uh, somebody wants to observe the phenomena, what would be the system? Okay, to observe FDPO. So usually uh, FDPO is uh, uh, observed actually in experimental system. You have to calculate the structure factor. Right. Which system, where? Uh, for example, the examples I have given, there are vibrated rods, or there are active pneumatic systems where actually experiments have been done. I see. And you have giant fluctuations, and you can actually extract the finite size correction which carries this FDPO behavior. So, through uh, structure factor, you can calculate. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, let's thanks to the speaker.